Hello, I'm Danny and this is a short video on the effects of changes in the exchange rates on the macro economy. I got asked to make this video a few hours ago and basically I'm going to run through the different effects of changes in exchange rates and then do a few multiple choice questions and just go through them. If you want information on what causes there to be changes in exchange rates, you want to be looking at the monetary policy video. I'll try to put a link in the description -y bit below if I remember to. So, the first thing that we're going to look at is what exchange rates actually are. Now, an exchange rate, the actual definition you could use, is the price at which one currency exchanges for another. If they ask you for a definition in your five marker, you might want to put an example in as well. So, at the moment, or at least five minutes ago, one pound was equal to 1.68 US dollars. Because one unit of our currency is worth more than one unit of their currency, it means that we've got a really strong exchange rate. I mean, with the US it has been much higher in the past, but this is still pretty strong. So, what happens when the exchange rate strengthens? The first thing that we're going to look at is the effect of a strengthening exchange rate on aggregate demand. For reasons that I'm going to explain later, a strengthening of the exchange rate leads to a fall in employment, which means that there is a fall in national income, so overall there's a fall in disposable income, which means that there's decreased consumption. People are spending less because they've got less to spend, so consumption falls. Obviously this shifts the aggregate demand curve to the left. The reduction in demand for exports, which I'll go into later, leads to a reduction in business confidence, which means they're less likely to invest. A fall in investment again causes aggregate demand curve to shift to the left. When there is a strong exchange rate, imports seem cheaper than us than our own like domestically produced goods and services, so we increase the amount we're importing. On the other hand, our exports look more expensive in other countries to them compared to their domestically produced goods and services, so they decrease the amount like that they're importing of our exports. So this increase in imports and decrease in exports leads to a further left shift of the aggregate demand curve. And I've shown it on that diagram there. You can see the left shift of the aggregate demand curve and you can see the effect it has. So there's been a fall in real output and a fall in the price level. So if we are looking for a positive here of the strengthening of the exchange rate, it does decrease inflationary pressure. We're now going to look at the effect on economic growth. And a very, very important thing to notice here is the difference between a fall in the rate of economic growth and negative economic growth. A fall in the rate of economic growth still means there's a rise in output over time. Maybe it's not a very big rise, but there's still a rise, whereas negative economic growth means there's actually a fall in output over time. And typically, a strengthening of the exchange rate will only cause there to be a fall in the rate of economic growth. The main reason for this will be our decreased ability to sell abroad, because if we have a strong exchange rate, it means that our goods and services appear to be very expensive abroad, so there's less demand for UK output. And if there's no effective demand out there for what a firm's producing, they're not going to bother producing it. So this decrease in demand for UK output will lead to a decreased rate of real output. Often it's true that there's still an increase in the amount of real output, but it's much lower than it could be if it followed the trend rate of growth. So I suppose you could say this is in a negative output gap. However, a really important question to ask yourself, which is at the bottom of the slide there, in a nice sassy big orange font, is what are we importing? Because if we're taking advantage of the fact that we have cheaper imports, imports from abroad appear to be cheaper to us, and we're importing lots of raw materials, this actually lowers the production costs for firms. So it could lead to economic growth, actual economic growth, quite a high rate of it, if we've got a much lower cost of production. And that is the point that examiners love. If they can find that point in your essay, they just light up. That is the point that will get the examiner's big tick on your page, if that's what examiners do nowadays. I remember I looked at a copy of an English paper I got back, and it just had the word tick typed all over it, so it didn't actually tick, they just type tick. It's really random. We've got a nice bright point here, though. A strengthened exchange rate actually leads to a decrease in inflationary pressure. Domestic suppliers, they face competition from lots of cheap imports, because obviously imports from other countries appear very cheap to UK consumers, so they think, oh, I might buy these instead. So UK firms actually have to work very hard to cut their costs in order to compete. So this actually leads to a lower level of price in the whole economy. So you typically have a reduced price level, as you can see on your aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram there. We're now going to look at the effect of the strengthened exchange rate on employment. The first thing we could look at is the reduced demand for exports, meaning that businesses aren't confident, as we discussed previously. 
they haven't got the confidence that there's going to be any demand for their production, so they're going to reduce their production and they're probably going to reduce their investment. If they're reducing their investment, they're going to reduce their investment in labour because wages are a huge cost for businesses. So if they make a few people redundant, that increases unemployment. Our exports being expensive abroad also means that we lose industries to abroad, particularly the manufacturing industry in the UK. So deindustrialization occurs, which leads to structural unemployment. We lose our industries to other countries simply because we are unable to compete on price, which is quite a big thing that consumers look at when they're deciding which product to buy, um, you know, which, who from, that sort of thing. Uh, we can't compete on price in the international market because our prices seem so much higher than that of other countries if we've got a strong exchange rate. We're now going to look at the effect of a strong exchange rate on the balance of payments. If we've got a strong exchange rate, imports seem cheaper than domestic goods, so we increase our importation. So, for example, when I went to America once, it would have been quite a few years ago, probably about seven years ago now. Uh, I saw all these toy... OK, it was quite embarrassing because I wasn't even that young, but there were all these toy raccoons and they were really cheap. They seem really cheap because of the exchange rate, so I bought loads of toy raccoons. Whereas when I went back another time, when the exchange rate was a bit weaker, I didn't buy nearly so many toy raccoons, which may have been because they were more expensive, or it may have been because I just grew up. I'm not really sure. But that's a nice little anecdote for you. To add to this, our exports seem really expensive to people abroad, so they decrease the amount that they're like buying from our exports, so we actually decrease our exportation. Increase in imports, decrease in exports, that leads to an increased balance of payments deficit. Obviously, a balance of payments deficit isn't so good for the UK because it means that there are serious leakages from the circular flow of income. And obviously, if we've got falling national income, that's not so good for the UK economy because it leads to less demand for domestically produced goods and services, which could lead to the closure of UK businesses, stuff like that. We're just going to take a quick look at the benefits of a strong exchange rate before we're moving on to multiple choice. If we have got a strong exchange rate, it means we have cheaper imports, so we can afford to import more goods and services. So consumers might have a rising living standard because they can afford to have a higher quantity of goods and services. So say if you could only buy UK goods and services, you maybe you could only buy one t-shirt Whereas if you can buy lots of imported goods, maybe you can afford to buy five t-shirts because they seem cheap because of the exchange rate. And somebody with five t-shirts may be deemed to have a higher materialistic standard of living than someone with one t-shirt. The point there about the standard of living is always a very wishy-washy one with examiners. A much stronger one is if you've got cheaper imports and you're importing raw materials, it reduces the production costs the shifts the short run aggregate supply curve to the right and it enables new firms to enter the market because if there's lower production costs it essentially means that firms have to make less money before they break even and gain profit thus it's more financially viable for more firms to enter the market leading to an increase in total production within the economy. And obviously if there's more firms in the market it means there's higher employment and a much nicer economic situation. The final point I'm going to make here is that it's cheaper to import new technology because it seems much cheaper due to the strong exchange rate. This means that firms are almost encouraged to invest. They think, look, it's cheap, I may as well invest, and thus increase my rate of productivity. So firms have got higher productivity because they've invested in this technology and capital and stuff from abroad. So if they've got a higher rate of productivity, this shifts the long run aggregate supply curve to the right, so in the future we have a greater capacity to supply goods and services. So the economy is able to produce more goods and services, for example, to meet the demands of domestic and international customers. So an evaluative point you might want to make about this is maybe in the short term, the strong exchange rate might not be so good, but in the long term, because we've been able to import this new technology at a very low cost, very low price, it means that we have the capacity when there's an economic upturn and there's a weak exchange rate, we've got the capacity, therefore, to produce a more suitable amount and meet the demand. We're now going to go through three multiple choice questions because that's something that the guy that asked me to make this video asked me to do. So I'm going to go through three questions and now I'm going to give you the chance to stop this video and have a go at the question yourself before I run through it. Okay, the answer is... D. So now we're going to go through the others and why they can't be right. 
If there's a rise in the exchange rate, we know straight away this causes there to be an increase in the price of exports rather than a decrease in the price of exports and a decrease in the price of imports rather than an increase. So A and B, straight away we can push off the table. We can now look at C. There's an increase in domestic demand. Well, if there's been a rise in the exchange rate, it will mean that we are exporting less, which means there's going to be a fall in employment in the UK. And we're also going to be importing more, so there's going to be demand for internationally produced goods and services rather than our domestic goods and services. So we're not going to have the demand due to our fall in employment and we're not going to have the demand for domestic goods and services because we're going to have the demand for international goods and services. So C can't be right, which leaves D, which is the right answer. If there's a rise in the exchange rate, it means that our exports seem expensive in other countries, so we export less. If we're exporting less, firms within the UK will suffer a fall in confidence. Maybe some of them will go out of business because they simply can't afford to stay afloat because they haven't got the demand they were relying on from abroad. Some of them will suffer deindustrialization; they'll lose their industry to abroad. So there'll be lots of reasons for domestic unemployment. Moving on now to June 2012, question 24. I'm going to give you a moment now, so pause it here if you want to have a go at the question yourself. And the answer is A. I think with this question, the thing you want to do is look at the question and look at the answers and see what it wants. It wants to know what the exchange rate should be against the US dollar and the euro for the situation to be, you know, the best for the UK. So essentially, we're importing stuff from the US and exporting stuff to Europe. If we're importing stuff, we want there to be cheap imports, because we obviously don't want to be spending loads of money on US goods and services, or US steel, I suppose. And the exchange rate that gives us low prices is a strong exchange rate. So if we've got a strong exchange rate against the US dollar, it means that imports seem quite cheap to us, so we can import lots and lots of whatever we're importing from the US. Then if you read further on the question, it says that we're selling our outputs, uh, or we're exporting, I suppose, to countries that use the euro. So if we're exporting, we want our goods to appear to be cheap in other countries. And an exchange rate that makes our exports seem to be cheap, which means our exports sell more, would be a weak exchange rate. So we want to have a weak exchange rate against the euro. So essentially we want a strong exchange rate against the US dollar and a weak exchange rate against the euro. I would do all that in your head before you even look at the answers, because just seeing all those strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, it's just going to confuse you. I mean, if you look at that, why bother doing that when you can just work out in your head whether it should be strong or weak and then just look for the right answer? And it's actually quite useful here because the first answer is the right answer, so you can just tick A straight away. Well, obviously don't tick it, like fill it in on your answer sheet. Obviously, for some questions, you have to look at the answers and go through them, but I think that for this particular question and quite a few other questions, it's much more beneficial to work out the answer yourself before looking at the given answers so that the other ones don't confuse you. 97% of the time, your first answer that you think of will be the right answer. I mean, someone said that to me in a lesson once, but it's also true that 87.3% of statistics are made up on the spot, so, you know, I'm not too sure on how close they were to the real statistic. But if we're working on that idea, it seems like a good idea to try to work out the answer yourself before looking at the given answers. The final question. Pause it now if you want to have a go. And the answer is A. If we look at the other answers really quickly, the answer can't be B because a fall in the exchange rate will actually lead to a rise in the rate of inflation because A, there will be less competition within the UK because imports will be seen to be really expensive, UK consumers will be left with just the UK like domestically produced goods and services. So the suppliers might put the prices up because they realise, you know, there's less competition, may as well put the prices up and increase our profits. So there's inflationary pressure because of that. There's also inflationary pressure because incomes will be rising due to the rise in the exportation levels. And this rise in income will lead to a rise in demand within the UK economy. And if this demand is greater than the economy's capacity to supply goods and services, you're going to get inflation because of that. The market mechanism will force prices up in order to eliminate the excess demand. Looking at C, we know that a weaker exchange rate will have a rise in the prices of imports. Weaker exchange rate, higher price of imports. Straight away we can cross out C, we know it's totally wrong. Looking at D now, if we've got a weaker exchange rate, it means that our exports will probably sell better abroad, whereas we're going to be importing less. So actually we're going to have a 
growth, you know, the current account surplus is going to grow rather than fall, so we can cross that one off, which leaves only A. And we know that A is right because when there's a weaker exchange rate, it means that people abroad see our goods and services, our exports, as being cheaper, and so they buy them. And look, if you see here, a fall in the foreign currency price. Essentially, they're cheaper abroad. So straight away, you know A is the right answer, and you're going to cross it off in your sheet. Woo, that's the end of the exchange rate video. Hopefully the Arjun who requested this video and anyone else that's watching it has found it useful. Hope you have a lovely day and best of luck with the upcoming exam. Bye.